a tray for my wife. Good morning, church. I bring you greetings from up the street in Monrovia, California, where I am the assistant in pastoral care there at the All Nations Church under Pastor Miriam Gonzalez. We say hello and hi and we love you, even though we meet at a different place. Coming back here reminds me of being a child. I have good memories of this place. Visiting grandma and grandpa. Grandma and grandpa spoiling me. Good, good memories. I remember coming to Sabbath school and waking up early and riding with my grandfather as we would go pick up the, 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 the sick and shut-in in the van. Me and my sister would get in the very back of it and we would just wait for him to go over a dip so we could bounce way up high in the air. I remember coming and sitting in these same pews as a little kid, bouncing on my grandmother's lap, sitting in between my grandfather and grandmother, just like my son is doing probably this morning right now. So while it's been a little while since I've been here, I do feel somewhat connected. This is family. This is family. I want to thank uh, Pastor Walker uh, for giving me the opportunity to come, and Pastor Lori, uh, who is a good friend of mine, um, and I, I promised him I wouldn't embarrass him either, because we too went to high school, and we all have memories of what we call BC, before Christ, before Christ. <laughs> but praise God for his grace and mercy, right, cousin? <laughs> praise God for his grace and mercy. Today we're going to talk about a subject called The Last Draw. The last draw. So pray with me as we begin. Dear God in heaven, Lord, thank you so much for giving us all the opportunity to live one more day. We couldn't breathe if it wasn't for your permission. As a matter of fact, if you hadn't breathed into that dirt so long ago, none of us would even be here. And then if you hadn't sent your son to rescue us from the mess that we got ourselves into, none of us would be here. But we thank you so much for Jesus Christ and what he's done for us. Amen. Lord, and we came to lift up your holy name today. Amen. So I pray that as I present your word this morning, that your spirit would permeate each and every one of our hearts. Amen. That you would touch each and every one of our lives and that we would not leave here the same way that we came in. Amen. Dear Jesus, we love you. Yes. And we are excited to see what you're going to do for us this morning. Amen. 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 Water. It's good for you. It's important, right? Amen. Has anybody in here gone without water? Anybody? No? Anybody over here? No, anybody not drink water? That, that's good because I'd be scared. Because water is vitally important to our beings, okay? Did you know your body is roughly 70% water? 70. The build of your muscles alone are about 75% water. Your blood is 82%. Your brain cells, 85%. And even your bones are 25% water. Do you know that? Your body loses approximately two quarts of 64 ounces of water a day through various, you know, Processes. Amen. <laughs> Somebody said amen. amen. Better out than in, huh? Amen. Water being the main lubricant in your joints can help prevent arthritis and back pain. Did you know that? It increases your immune system, the efficiency of it. If you drink more water, you could get sick less. Water prevents the clogging of your arteries in the heart and in the brain, and so it reduces the risk of heart attack and stroke. I'm just talking about water. I'm not talking about aspirin or Bayer or any of the other medications. Pure water, okay? Water is needed to efficiently manufacture neurotransmitters in the brain, including serotonin and melatonin for hormones. It also improves our attention span and can, pre and can even prevent attention deficit disorder. Did you, just, just some water. No riddling. Just, just some water. It can help you out. Just drink a little bit more 
Water. Water prevents memory loss as we age. Reducing the risk of degenerative diseases like Alzheimer's. Did you know that? Water. Well, you guys knew this about water already. No, I'm, I'm kind of beating a dead horse. You guys already knew all this about water. Because no, I did it. I didn't know. Okay, the average adult can last as much as seven weeks without food, but can't go more than about five days without water. Water is necessary for life. Are you with me? We need to get some water in us. Now, get into our story. It's a familiar story. Story of the woman at the well. If you've heard the story before, let me hear you say, I heard it. I heard it. So you've heard the story of the woman at the well before. Well, good. Bear with me as I tell it to you again. <laughs> Amen? Amen. So, story picks up. Jesus is preaching and doing miracles in Jerusalem, right? And then he goes and does some baptism, some baptizing in the countryside of, of, Judea, of Judea. Not him, actually, it was his disciples. But still, the religious leaders, the super spiritual folk, the Pharisees, were starting to take offense to what Jesus was doing. Jesus was starting to build a following, and they were starting to get angry with him. And Jesus was wasn't quite ready yet to deal with them on that level. So Jesus said, let me steal away. I'm going to go from Judea up to Galilee and rest for a while. I'll let them be angry and stoop there by themselves. So he decided he was going to go to Galilee. Now, just so you can understand what that's like, Judea is, is down here. Okay, this right here is Judea, if we were looking at a map. And then, and then, and then Galilee was up here. Okay, are you with me? Up here is Galilee, and down here is Judea, and something's in the middle. Who knows what's in the middle? Samaria. Samaria. The country of Samaria. The country of no good, half-breed, semi-religious, no Jesus having, Samaria. As a matter of fact, the Jews said, we won't even call them by their name, we'll just call them dogs. Because that's what they are to us. Samaritans were no good, see. Back in 722, when they, when they destroyed the temple, when they scattered the people. Some of them were left. Not everybody got scattered. Some of them were left in Samaria. And what ended up happening was the Assyrians came in and they attacked and, and, and they brought some other people in. And, and, and they brought some Persians and they, and they brought some Midians in there. And, and, and nature took its course. And some of, those, some of those Israelites and some of those Jews said, I kind of like the way those Persians look. <laughs> and, and some of the Persians were like, hey, hey Jews. <laughs> what you doing? And they fell in love and they began to intermarry. And they began to produce children, and those children were no longer of the pure race. Yeah. They weren't Jews. Yeah. They were some kind of mixed half-breed. Not pure anymore. As a matter of fact, if you were a Jew, and you came across a Samaritan, it was unclean for you to touch them. You had to wash. Get clean if you touched a filthy dog from Samaria. Yuck. Get them off of me. It was a very strained relationship. Very strained. Well, Jesus has to get to Galilee. How's he going to get there with Samaria in the middle? Well, let me tell you something, because the Bible says, the Bible says that Jesus had to go through Samaria. But Jesus did not have to go through Samaria. As a matter of fact, most Jews didn't go through Samaria because they didn't want to get dirty. They didn't want to touch those filthy people. They didn't want to have to look at them. They didn't want to have to rub shoulders with them. They didn't have the truth. They were no good. They weren't like us. I don't want to have to deal with them. 
So most Jews would go through what they called the, the Bethshin Gap. They would go from Judea, and they would go over this mountain range, range, and across the Jordan River, and then up in between, and then cross back over the Jordan River, and go into Galilee. It took twice as long. Just so they didn't have to deal with those filthy people. You got anybody you don't like? Yeah, you know, y'all sitting here all pretty looking at me like, oh, I love everybody. I know some of you are sitting over here because somebody's sitting over here that you don't like. And sometimes you get to church and you see them in the parking lot. Yo, oh, gosh, let me get back in the car before they this. I don't know if I'm going to Sabbath school today because if I go to Sabbath school, so and so is going to be there. And I don't know if I really want to deal with them. So let me go around about way. Anyway, that's how the Jews were. I know y'all don't like that. I know y'all don't like y'all don't like that. Y'all avoid people. You love everybody, right? Just like Jesus. Jesus had to go through. Samaria. And I can imagine the disciples were a little bit disappointed because, again, they didn't want to deal with them. They didn't like dealing with them. So, when Jesus says, you know, I gotta go, I have to go through Samaria, the disciples knew something. Scholars believe, well, it's found. Every time that Jesus says, I gotta do something, I have to go here, Oh, I must be here. I got to do that. I got to do this. That's bad news. Because that means it's God's will. That means it was something that God planned and that they probably weren't going to come out looking too good in. So they heard that phrase before and they knew that something was coming up. Oh, I got to go. Uh-oh. What do we got to deal with now? All right, well, I guess it's okay. I guess we'll go through Samaria and help out those dogs. Maybe somebody needs some healing. Maybe we can teach somebody a lesson. And so they went. They walked. They walked. The Bible says they got to Samaria, got to this well at about noon. Right? About noon time. Noon time. Now, this is the desert. This is hot. It's hot. And they walk in. In this hot desert. It's hot. You like to sweat? You like to sweat? Can you imagine walking? Now, mind you, the day started at about 6 a.m. Then at about the sixth hour, it was noon time, and they got to the well. So that means they've been probably walking for six hours in the desert. In, in, the, in the desert. And, and so I did a little fun research just for me. I said, how fast does a human walk? How fast do they walk? And, and, and so most of this research was like, oh, you know, if you're, if you're a lady, it depends, it depends on how, how old you are, what sex you are, how tall you are, how short you are, how big you are. But the average overall is that a woman walks about three miles per hour. And, and, and an average male walks about three and a half miles per hour. So, you know, in my head, I did some calculations and I said, well, you know, sin has probably taken a toll, probably slowed us down a little bit. So let's bump them up to four. Four miles per hour, traveling for six hours. How many miles is that, mathematicians? How, how many? 24. 24 miles. That's two miles short of a marathon. And the day's only half over. Can you do that? No? Can any of y'all do that? You just get up and walk? Yeah, some of you say, yeah, you can do it, huh? Say, I'm strong, I got some strong legs. They get to Samaria having walked I don't know, in my estimation, perhaps that far. 24 miles. And they tire. They tire. So Jesus sits down at the well. Jesus sits down at the well and the disciples go in for food. And here comes our main character. Main character. Woman at the well. Jesus is sitting there, tired, weary from his journey, and this woman comes up. And Jesus says, please, give me a drink of water. Whoa, 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 hey, who are you talking to? Who are you talking? You're a Jew, and I'm a Samaritan. What, what are you talking to me for? Re remember how the Jews felt about the Samaritans, right? Do you think she didn't know it? You think she never dealt with a Jew before in her life? 
She knew how Jews were supposed to treat her. She knew how she'd been treated by Jews in the past. Why are you talking to me? On top of that, she was a woman. She was a woman. And at that time, she didn't talk to women in public. She just didn't do it. It was a no-no. She didn't do it. You don't talk to the woman in public. You wait till you get home, and then you can talk to her all you want. But you don't do it in public. And here Jesus is, a Jew, talking to these dogs, the Samaritans, who happens to be a woman, which makes it even worse. And she's like, why are you asking me this question? Well, I have a proposition to make. See, sometimes when you're dealing with people who have been ostracized, who have been dealt with harshly, who have been treated badly, you can't just start with what they're doing wrong. Did you know that? Did you know? See, we have this phrase we like to, we like to throw around all willy-nilly. We like to say, well, keep it real. As a, as a matter of fact, one of my young people at my church said, hey, let's keep it 100. Let's keep it 100. I was like, all right. I guess that's cool. Keep it 100. But when you're dealing with somebody who's hurt, somebody with all kind of walls up, somebody with all kind of layers up, somebody who's been hated on for some time now, you've got to break the ice somehow. And see, back in the first chapter of John, there was a lineage that described Jesus. It was in verse 14, chapter 1. It said, Jesus is full of grace and truth. Grace and truth. Grace and truth. So Jesus didn't just come at her and say, hey, this is what you need to know. But he had some grace on her. So he said, hey, let me, give you, let me give you some confidence right now. Can you give me a drink of water? Before I come trying to tell you everything that I got. Before I come trying to give you all the truth that I've learned. Before I try to make you dress like me, look like me, before I try to make you learn what I learned and know what I know, before I try and come at you a certain way, don't I need to at least give you some sort of relationship? Don't we need some give and take in this thing? Don't I need to show that I respect you in a certain way? Is that not important? I venture to say that Jesus made her feel somewhat important by asking her to give him a drink of water. Now, she says, what are you doing asking me this question? And Jesus says, if you only knew the gift God has for you and who you're speaking to, you would have asked me and I would have given you some living water. And this woman is taken aback. <laughs> what? Huh? <laughs> Who's he talking to? She was doing all of that, all of that. But sir, but sir, you have no rope. And where's your bucket at? How you gonna give me some water? As a matter of fact, I think you need me in this situation. A uh, good sir, I got a rope. And I got a bucket. I can get my own water, thank you very much. Uh-oh. Girl got some attitude. She got some attitude. But sir, you don't have a rope or a bucket, she said. And this well is very deep. Where would you get this living water? Just so you all know, I'm reading from the New Living Translation. Okay? I don't study from this translation. But I read from it because I think it's very important to read from a Bible you can understand. Y'all hearing me? Because y'all read, right? Y'all read the Bible. You read every day? Man, don't be sitting up in the church crying to me, though. <laughs> you, you read sometimes. Sometimes, right? You got a Bible you can understand? Yeah, good, good, good. How about y'all? Y'all got a Bible you can understand? Oh, you don't want me to ask you, huh? Like, don't come over here. Don't come over here. Yeah, you got to read the Bible. Read the translation that you can understand. Amen. Read one you can get with. Read one that speaks to you so you can understand it. Back to the point. And this well is very deep. Where would you get this living water? And besides, do you think that you're greater than our ancestor Jacob who gave us this well? 
How can you offer better water than he and his sons and his animals enjoy? Now, I, I told you about water, right? Water was important. Now, this guy, Jacob, dug this well. And when you're in the desert, water is very important. Now, you dig a well and you provide water for a people, you're going to be big time. You're going to be big man in the town. They might elect you mayor. They might give you the keys to the city. Anything you want, you got because you gave us water. And so she brings us the best thing she knows about. How you going to diss what gives our people life every day? How you going to mess with what sustains our life here in Samaria? How are you going to tell me that this isn't good enough? How are you going to come to my water and tell me that my water is not good enough, that you have something better for me? How are you going to do that? So she brings up Jacob. They can bend them. Brings up Jacob's sons. Not living anymore. They didn't help her fix any of her problems. Brings up his cattle. You know, the cattle was his wealth. So Jacob had kids and Jacob had money. And Jacob gave us our water. Who are you to talk about Jacob? Because Jacob gave me this well. And if you diss this well, then you dissing Jacob. So who do you think you are? What do you think you're better than us? Just like you Jews. Coming up in here telling us what we're doing wrong. Just like you. Who do you think you are? Jesus replied, anyone who drinks this water will soon become thirsty again. But those who drink the water I give will never be thirsty again. It becomes a fresh bubbling spring within them, giving them eternal life. Amen. Giving them eternal life. And her, her ears perked up. She said, what? She didn't really hear no part about eternal life just yet. She heard, I ain't got to come back to this well tomorrow. <laughs> Well, I ain't got a hike to carry. You know they used to carry the water buckets on their head. On their head like. Just like, can you do that? Can you walk a mile with a water jug on your head, filled with water? Oh, oh they say they African. That's nothing for them. That's what they say. They say that's normal. Ready? <laughs> well, please. Teach us, because I couldn't do it. There's no way I could make that happen. I couldn't do it. So she heard, I don't have to come out here and draw this water again. Give me that water so that I won't get thirsty again and I won't have to come out here to draw anymore. I won't have to come get this water anymore. See, it was already odd that she was there at home. In the heat of the day, why would I take a hike to go carry some big heavy water and go to work when it's the hottest time of the day? That wasn't the regular custom. No. You go early in the morning when it's cool or in the evening when it's, when it's, when it's cool, right? Amen. That's when you go. So why is she there at noontime? The heat of the day. See, when you went to grab water, I won't, I won't do it to my wife. I, I, I preached this sermon one time and I went up to my wife and I said, you know, that's the woman's job. It's the woman's job, baby. That's the woman's job. You get the water. You fetch the water. I'm not going to do that today. But in that time, that's what, that was one of the women's responsibilities. The women went and they got the water. And they brought it back. Now, y'all know how y'all women are. When y'all get together, y'all get to talk. And it was much like probably a beauty shop or something would be today. So they would go, they would get the water, and they would, oh, you know what my husband said to me? And my kids, they're running all over the place. I don't know how to deal with these babies, kids. And so and so got a rash. Did you know so and so got a rash? And did you hear so and so from church? And blah, 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 blah. Just having a good old time. That's what they would do when they would go to get the water. They would go and they would have fun. Well, I don't know if it was fun, but they would definitely talk to each other. For some reason, she wasn't part of this group. For some reason, she didn't care to associate with the rest of her society, with the rest of those who were in her 
same job description. She, 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 she wanted to get away from what society was doing to her. She didn't feel comfortable around them. She felt a little awkward, didn't like the eyes looking at her. Didn't like people staring at her. So she wanted to go where nobody else would be there. She wanted to get to the well and get her water and get home without having to deal with anybody's mess. With anybody looking at her sideways. She wanted to be able to get her water and get back before anybody could make a sly remark about her. Talk about her past. Bring up her mistakes. Before anybody could walk by and grab their husbands real tight. Oh, we gonna get there in a second. She wanted to get there where she didn't have to deal with those people who were so judgmental who was so hard on her. So she went in the heat of the day. She'd rather, I don't know, get heat stroke or something. She'd rather be hot and sweaty in the heat of the day than deal with some church folk. Oh, I'm sorry, did I say that? I meant some, some, some other Samaritans. That's what I meant to say. She, she meant to get there and, and get back back to her regular life where nobody would judge her, where she could live in comfort, back, back to the, the regular, everyday, run-of-the-mill life that she was living. She just came to draw some water. She just came to draw some water. She didn't plan on meeting this guy there today. She didn't plan on anything being different that day. The same old thing that she was going to, same old well she went to every day, same method she used hiding from everybody else, she was employing today. But even in her search, even in her embarrassment, she found Jesus waiting for her at the well. Hallelujah. I'm getting ahead of myself, okay? So she Jesus replied, anyone who drinks this water will soon become thirsty again, but those who drink the water I give will never be thirsty again. It becomes a fresh, bubbling spring within them, giving them eternal life. Please, sir, the woman said, give me this water. Then I'll never be thirsty again, and I won't have to come here to get water. Now, remember I talked about how, how Jesus dealt with the grace, right? Jesus comes in grace and truth, but we dealt with the grace. Time to get to the truth. Go get your husband. Jesus said, okay, okay, you want this water? Go get your, go get your husband. Okay. I, I don't have a husband. I, I'm single, I'm not married. I don't have a husband. And Jesus said, you're right. You ain't got no husband. As a matter of fact, you done had five husbands. And the man you living with right now ain't your husband. So now we get to it. Now we understand a little bit why she was hiding. She got her water bottle and she was <laughs> ducking out the way. See, even in that society, divorce was permitted up to about two or three times. But even then, you were shunned. Even then, people looked down on you. To be married five times? Five. Five times. None of them worked out. None of them. None of them worked out. Five times. And now you're with another man. And anybody have relationship problems? No, you, you ain't got a relationship. You ain't got a relationship. <laughs> I ain't gonna embarrass you like that. Although there's like this website called Christian Singles or something like that. Christian Singles. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> I'm messing with you. But go get your husband. I don't have a husband. You're right. You had five, and the man you're with now is not your husband. See, now we're, dealing, now we're dealing with a real issue. Now Jesus is not talking about water anymore. Now Jesus is not talking about water anymore. Now, it's ironic that they met at a well, because this woman apparently can't find what she's looking for. This woman apparently is digging for something, is searching for something, some hole to be filled in her heart, some hole to be filled in her life. She's looking for something. I mean, she had five husbands. Five. And she's still working. 
She's, she's working on number six. She's looking and she's looking hard. She's after her. I got to get me a man. Because of some brokenness in her heart. We don't know what happened to her in her life. We don't know what her childhood was like. But we know that she wasn't finding what she was looking for. We know that she was walking around and she was wandering around and she was going here and there and she was going to, to Tommy and she was going to Billy. And she was, she was going to Jerome and she was going to Tyrone. Yeah, and she, 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 was, she was going to George. And she was going to Alejandro. Oh, she was getting around. She was going to all of them looking for something. Maybe she didn't even know what she was looking for, but she was looking for it. Something she felt she needed to survive another day. She couldn't go without it, so she had to get it. And what she thought it was, was a man. She thought it was a man. I don't mean to get too personal or dig in anybody's lives, but some people have been searching for something their whole lives. And filling that search with random stuff. Random stuff. Some people can't get off the bottom. They can't get, that's what they need. Whatever the hole is, whatever's void in them, they gotta fill it. They gotta fill it. And every time the, the substance gets low, you gotta refill. Because you gotta go back, so I gotta get some more. I gotta get some more booze. I gotta get drunk again. I, I got to. I got to. Give me another joint, please. You got a lighter? Please, I, I need it. I need it because I'm empty and something, I can't deal with this pain. I need something to cover it up. Hers was men, what's yours? What are you looking for? And are you finding it there? Or is it just a temporary fix for the everyday things we go back to over and over again because it gives me life for just a little while longer? See, I talked about water. And I talked about the well. And water is necessary for life, but water only lasts for today. You can go back to the well every day, but every day you're going to have to go back to it again because it doesn't last forever. It's only temporary. And I came to talk to you about the last draw today. The last time you'll ever have to go back to your well. I want you to reach the point where you don't have to go back there anymore. To where you're not searching anymore. You're not looking for substance anymore. You've got all the nutrition you need. Everything you'll ever need until eternal life. I want you to find it. Because she wasn't. She was on her sixth dude. Still looking. And I imagine the cries going out at night from her. Lord, I thought this time it would work. Lord, he told me he was different. Well, I only need some companionship. And then that turned into something else. And, and he's nice to talk to and, 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 and all the things. But somehow it just seems to keep failing. You know, every time I get drunk, I, I come down, I, I, I got a headache, I, I'm hungover. And, 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 you know, I just need to do it again. It's just not working. It's not enough. You know, and sometimes I, I get high, I, I do my drugs, and, and, and it, lasts, it lasts well for a while. I have some fun, I see some cool things, I hallucinate, I get out of my own self. Sometimes, sometimes when I'm going through it, I just bury myself in work. I just, I just go to work and I stay there. I work as hard as I can at work. So I don't have to deal with my everyday problem. It serves as some kind of balm on my aching bones, on my aching body. I need something to be fulfilled, and I don't really care what it is. I don't care what it is you guys are looking for. I don't care what it is you're using to fill the void. You'll have to go back to it again tomorrow. It's just the way it is. Go get your husband. Go get your husband. I don't have a husband. After this, the woman says, you must be a prophet. <laughs> so tell me, why is it that you Jews insist Jerusalem is the only place for worship? Don't we like to shift the subject when we start getting too personal? <laughs> People start getting all up in your business and you want to change the subject. You want to talk about something else. Woman says, you're a prophet. 
You're also a Jew. So tell me, where are we supposed to worship? Our people say we're supposed to worship here. Your people say you're supposed to worship there. And Jesus says, first of all, let's get something straight. Let's get something real straight, okay? Salvation comes through the Jews. So there's some stuff we know you don't know. Also, Samaritans only use the Pentateuch. You know what the Pentateuch is? Bible scholars. Pentateuch. Bible, Bible scholars. What is it? First five books of the Bible. First five books of the Bible. They only used the Pentateuch, so their knowledge of Christ was limited. All they took into their canon was the first five books. So they only knew so much. So Jesus says, hey, first of all, you don't know everything there is to know. But second of all, let me clear something up for you. A time is coming where you ain't even got to worry about that. You, you don't even got to worry about where you're going to worship. You don't even have to worry about, about how you're going to worship. You don't even have to worry about, about what you're going to look like when you worship. You don't have to worry about where you're going to go, you know, who's going to be looking, um, is it going to be at, at the proper venue. You, you don't have to be worried about all that because the time is coming when you're going to worship Him in spirit. And see, the spirit will lead you to all truth. <laughs> so if you, if you invite the spirit in, then you don't have to worry about the methodology. Okay? You don't have to worry about that. If you, if you invite the spirit in, the Holy Ghost... Jesus Christ, and you give him a real shot and opportunity, he'll work that stuff out. Amen. Amen. He'll work it out in you. Yes, he will. Now, now, don't misinterpret me. Please don't misinterpret me. Everything that God does is done decently and in order. Amen. Decently and in order. But the fact of the matter is, decently and in order can be done without the Spirit. You can be decent and in order and you're dead. You ever been to a dead church? You ever been to a dead church? It ain't the decency. It ain't the order. It ain't the theology. See, y'all are preaching to yourselves. <laughs> it's the spirit. It's the spirit. There's something in you when Jesus Christ comes in you. And it just livens your body up. And you can't help but be happy. See, you know what happened? The disciples came back. They came back. And they saw Jesus talking to this woman. And they said, what's he doing talking to that woman? Now, we don't know why, but the woman took off running. She took off running. She, she, she took off running. I didn't know what to think of it at first, but then, then, then I realized this, that she got something. She, she got something. See, because she dropped her water bucket. She dropped the water bucket. She came here to get some water. She went back to her regular well. I went to the bar to get drunk, but I left sober. See, I went to the coke house to get high one more time, but something told me I couldn't go in this time, and I had to go back. See, she ran back to the town without her water bucket, in public, with a changed disposition, and said, hey, come see a man who told me everything I ever did. Could this be the Messiah? Seeing straight off that this woman is different now. No longer is she hiding. She's out in the open proclaiming her testimony. No longer hiding her past, but proclaiming that there's a man who knows everything about me. I'm sure the people thought, just for a second, oh, what's new? Another man. One more man. What has he got to do with it? But seeing the change in her life, Seeing the change in her disposition, seeing her leap and yell and call everybody to Jesus, they were compelled to fight. Compelled to fight. Compelled to fight. They came and they heard Jesus. And at the end of the day, they said, we no longer believe because of what she said. But now we believe because we've heard him for ourselves, Jesus is all I need. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus.
Jesus is all I need. See, see, we started this thing out talking about Jesus had to go to Samaria. He had to. And we talked about how whenever Jesus says, I've got to go somewhere, that's God's will. See, God has an agenda. Did you know that? God has a place for you to be and a time for you to be there. And because Jesus is in communication with his Father, he knows where to be. And he knows when. The woman at that well was simply doing the same thing she did every day. The same thing she did every day to try and compensate for her shortcomings. But this time, there was a man waiting. Did you know that God can meet you right where you are? In your everyday circumstances, right in your struggles, and the thing that you may go back to tonight, Jesus can face up with you and say, hey, give me a drink of water. He can cause you to think about what you're doing. Think twice about it and maybe change your mind. And I encourage you to just have a conversation with my father. Just have a conversation with my friend Jesus and things are going to change. See, Jesus had an appointment at the well that day. He didn't know who it was with. He didn't know what it was for. But she didn't know she had an appointment. She showed up and she was healed from whatever she was looking for. That can happen to you too. She wasn't the only person who got a lesson. See, you had some disciples who still thought this marriage was well. You had some people who still were judging people who were making, who were, who were incomplete in their truth, who did not have a full understanding. They were walking around and saying, oh, I won't deal with them, they're the world. I won't mess with them, I don't like people like that around me. They're dirty, they got addictions, they're suffering with problems, I can't handle that. So let me step around them and I'll just go right back into my clean church with everybody wearing suits and dresses and everything will be okay. Those are the disciples. I don't want to deal with the Samaritans. They're no good. They don't deserve the gospel. They came back. The disciples did. They said, Jesus. Jesus, you got to eat. You got to eat, Jesus. Jesus, you, you got to eat. We've been walking all this way. We almost walked the marathon. You need some food. You're going you're gonna to get weak and you're going to shrivel up. And Jesus said, listen, listen, listen to me. I've already eaten. And they said, oh, did somebody give him some food? Man, maybe that woman cooked for him. Well, where, where did you eat? Where, where did you get your food from? Where did you get it from? Jesus said, I got sustenance, you know. He said, I get filled. I get nourished by doing the will of my Father. And I am filled up. See, you think, you think that it's four, four months until the harvest, and then things are going to pop. No, the harvest is right. Did you not see Samaritans who had partly the truth? They only needed someone to explain it to them. And the harvest was reaped, and the whole town eventually turned over. And you were going to go around Samaria. You were going to walk right around the people who wanted to hear what you were given. We are so privileged. We've got so much understanding and so much truth. We've got so much knowledge and we think that we're walking side by side with Jesus. Sometimes we take these side steps. Sometimes we don't want to deal with some people. People come in here stinking, smelling like the street they slept on, and we mm, take a shower. People come in here living hard lives, maybe still struggling with the bottle. Maybe we just walk past them on the street. Maybe they don't even get to the church. Maybe we're at work and we know that somebody's hurting, but we don't say anything to them. Maybe we commit the sin of omission. Maybe, I don't know. I don't know. But what I do know is that Jesus said he had to go through Samaria. Jesus said he had to go through Samaria. He had to. It was a must. It was necessary. People of God, 
whether you're the woman struggling or whether you're one of the disciples, Jesus has an appointment for you today. Amen. He's got an appointment. Amen. You may not know it, but Jesus said, I got to go down to Vita this morning. Oh, yes. oh, yes. I, I got to get there. Yes. Because somebody needs to hear something. Yes. If it's just for encouragement. If it's just so they can know that the mistakes they've made haven't lost them heaven. If they just need to be reminded that Jesus left heaven because if he didn't, we wouldn't have made it. We would have never found what we were looking for. I don't know who needed to be reminded of that. I don't know who needed to be reminded that we ought not turn our noses up at other people. Young, old, big, fat, skinny, short. You are a sinner saved by grace just like they are. And before Christ came in your life, you were all going to hell. So who are you to stick your nose up at somebody else? Including me. Including me. Who am I? So what I preach. If I walk over, if I walk outside and step over somebody who needs Jesus, I'm going to hell. Come on. It's time for us to step up, church. And I'm not talking about just Altadena. I'm hoping that this goes out all over the world. It's time for us to step up and start living like Jesus lived and start doing the things that Jesus wants us to do. Living and worshiping him in spirit and in truth. There's a time to have grace. And when that relationship is there, there's a time to tell the truth. Hey, brother, you've been coming for a while and I'm still smelling that lick on your breath. Still smelling. What can we do? What's going on? What's going on with you? How can we get through this thing? Hey, sister, that's about the fifth dude I've seen you with this year. Is everything okay? Is, is everything all right? I'm just saying you're going through them kind of quick. You're going through them kind of, and I want you to respect yourself because I'm just, I'm not calling you nothing, but I'm just saying you, you look at life. You look at life. And as my Christian sister, I don't want you to look like that. Because you're God's daughter. Listen. We all need Jesus. Each and every one of us. But I want to put out a special call right now. A special call. If you're, if you're searching for something, you're searching. Maybe you know what it is, maybe you don't. Maybe you know you need love. Maybe you know you need attention. Maybe you know you need just somebody to give you a hug. I don't know what it is. If you know you're searching, if you know it, then I want you to come down and have a special prayer. A special prayer. A special, special prayer. Now, for everybody else that's sitting down and watching, I want you to do something for me. I want everyone to stand up. Can we please stand up? I just want you to say silent prayer to yourself. Just a silent prayer. Just pray. Just pray. Because sometimes we build up so many walls, it's hard to penetrate them. But if the Holy Spirit is speaking to your heart right now, I want you to answer it. I want you to answer it. If the Holy Spirit is talking to you right now, you've been going back to the same old habits. You've been drawing from that same old well. And still you're thirsty. Still you're not filled. Still you're looking for something. I'm telling you that I met a man. He told me everything I did. And he changed my life. He changed my life. Could this be this? He's here. He's here this morning. I can, I can introduce you if you like. But you've got to engage in the conversation. You've got to at least talk to him. You've got to at least take one step in faith. Perhaps you know you've been hard on some people. Maybe you know that there are some things you're not proud of. 
Maybe unlike the Good Samaritan, you've stepped over some people that need help. God can fix you too. You may not even think you need fixing. But maybe you just want to have a heart like God had. A heart like Jesus had. That can see the hurt in people. And give them some Jesus. Give them that well of water that will spring up inside of their hearts unto everlasting life. Give them the peace. Put their searching to rest. I'm telling you, Jesus can do it for you. Jesus can do it for you, and he can do it right now. So if you want special prayer, you can come forward. You can come forward. I'll give you just a minute. Stuff. Somebody knows. Somebody knows your mess. Somebody knows everything you've been through. There's no sense in hiding, and I know people can be judgmental, but they're judging you anyway. Come to this meeting. Come see Jesus. He's here. He cares. And he loves you. And he loves you.
But we need to see good examples of those who are following Christ. We need to see examples of love, of grace, but also of truth and standard. Lord, lead our young people in the way that they should go. And help those of us who are role models to be leading them toward you. God, I pray for this beautiful church. It's been here for a long time. And Lord, I pray that it stays here until you come again. I pray for the ministry that it has in this part of the town. I pray for the light that it has. May it shine brightly, Lord. May it grow and grow and grow in your name. May people come here and know that Jesus Christ lives in this house. Oh God, we thank you so much.